Majesty has finished her cup and is taking a few quick puffs of a royal dimp while she puts on a crown. She'll be down in a sec. Thanks, Andrew. Fancy one? Yeah? No, no, nothing. Not exactly Jolly Jack Tower this morning, are you? No, not exactly. I've remembered when I first saw you. Do you? Mm. Dimly. Dimly's right. You must have had a few. Seven years ago. I was 11. Yes, well, you've grown up now. You and Elsie came down to see me mum in an old bone shaker one Sunday afternoon. Yeah, yes, I remember. I suppose Ray Langton would be your Sandra, nephew, please so Please to... do you mind. Look, I'm not exactly feeling... I know. Elsie, Francis Drake's getting niggled. All right, I'm coming down now. She's coming down, so I'll be on my way. And don't you talk her head off like you talk mine. That's what I get every morning. A lot of chatter, a half-cooked egg, some burnt toast, and marmalade all over my newspaper. Going to what I got this morning. I've got to return to my ship today. Oh, Bill, no. You said it was Friday. You said so. Golly, Admiralty love, not me. But you've only just come. I know, and now I've got to go. But it won't be for long, you know that. And then I'm out for good. I don't know what to say, Bill. Say yes, Elsie. That's all you can say. It's not as easy as that. It's very easy, Elsie, if you want it to be. Alan? I don't know, honestly. I, I, I just don't know. Well, he hasn't bothered to do anything about it, has he? Not even when he knew that I'd ask you to marry me. Well, has he? Has he? Oh, no. No. Well, I'm not Alan Howard, and I'm not going to sit around. I want you, Elsie. I love you, and I want to marry you. Bill, there are too many ghosts between us. There's this Phyllis and this Steve, and... They're dead. No, Elsie. It's the living that comes between us. The last time we parted in this room, seven years ago, it was Phyllis. This time, it's Alan. I don't know, Bill. Honestly, it may Elsie, be... Elsie, I've got to go and pack. Please, make up your mind. Come with me, love. I'll wait for you in the rovers till two o'clock. And if you're not there, well, I won't be around to bother you. It's up to you, love. 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 It's what? You've only got to lift your little finger and I'll go and tell her. You know the score with me, but I've got to know how you feel. Oh, I feel. I'll tell you how I feel. I feel as if I've been run over by a tram. I feel as if I'm having one of them nightmares that you can't wake up from. That's how I feel. All right. Go to the Rovers. Go to them and tell her whatever you want. But don't ask me to help you because, don't you see, it wouldn't be right. There are two of us in this. Three of us. You can't just duck out of this, love. Who's ducking out of anything? Look, if you want to go back, go back. If you don't, don't. It's as simple as that. God, I wish it was. I'll go and see her. But I meant what I said. One sign from you, and I'll know what I've got to do. I know what you're thinking. You think it's easy. But it isn't. I love you, Elsie. But I can't do it on my own. Hey, did I frighten you slamming the door like that? <laughs> you were miles away, you know. That's right. I I'm going to go down and see Mrs. Walker, see if she's seen the doctor yet. She should, you know. Uh, hey, did you know, in olden days, doctors oh, started... Oh, please, will you, will you just go away, Bernard? Please, go yeah. away. Sorry. That is not the point, Jack. I may appear to be all right. But how do we know I may not suffer from delayed shock? Hey, Annie, I've been suffering from that ever since we were married. You'll get used to it. Oh, very funny, very amusing. I wonder if it would be thought quite so hilarious if I had broken a limb. Ah, oh, come on, Annie, it's just your pride. If you'd been kicked by one of the Duke of Edinburgh's polo ponies, you'd have boasted about it. But just because it was a dirty old hole that you fell in... Are you all right, Mrs? 
I refuse to make any comment at this stage. Oh, but these things happen, you know. Oh, yes, these things happen. If a night watchman, who is presumably paid a salary... Uh, wages, more like. ...to maintain vigil on road excavations is guilty of negligence and gross dereliction of duty. But I only left home for a few minutes to go and have some tatty ash with Ogden's, that's all. That's all, I mm. see. Well, we'll see if the authorities think that's all. We'll see what they have to say about my ruined clothes mm. and shattered nerves. We uh, just thought we'd ask... Oh, we just thought we'd ask how she was like. Oh, there you are. See for yourself. Any walk of it her best on the warpath. Mind you, I think falling down that hole's done her a bit of good. It's given her something to live for. But I don't think it's done any good for Ben's prospects. But it wasn't Ben's fault, Mr Walker. Uh, That's right, and, uh, well, it wasn't Mrs Walker's, so it, it must have been the holes. Gah. Anyway, we'll, we'll see then, won't we? All this fuss and bother. The lamp was there when I looked oh, well, out. We, 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 we that may be so. But this is the second time I have complained about this hole in Coronation Street. Well, I'm sure I don't know which department it is, but it certainly is not parks and cemeteries. Uh, <laughs> it's for your hammock. Yeah, well, by the sound of that cold, you ought to be in your hammock. <laughs> you know, you were asking me what being at sea does for you. Well, I'll tell you. It makes you decisive. You know what you want, you go after it, and you get it. I think she'll be on the train with me this afternoon. Opening time. Quick one. Why not? I can't make it, I'm sorry. See you. See you. You want three blasts before you go? I'd rather have a peel of bells. <coughs> well, that's that. It looks like it. There's nothing I can do, Len. Isn't there? No, I'm not going to plead. I'm not going down on my knees. Mm. Rheumatism? Look, she's had enough unhappiness in her life by being talked into things by other people. Let her make up her mind this once on her own. Mate, I think she's already been talked into something by Bill Gregory. I think it's about time somebody else talked her into something. All right, Len, you do it. You have a word with her. You must be joking me. Ask her to stay. For you. You're still interested, aren't you? I... You're still interested, aren't you? I don't give you? a damn what you think, mate. Yeah, if I wanted her to stay and I thought she might listen, I'd certainly ask her myself. I wouldn't get anyone else. I said to him just now, I said, if you'd deserted your post in 1418, you know what would have happened? The war. This isn't the 1418, Mr Tatlock. All he did was to take a break for a plate of hot pot. Two platefuls and half a jar of red cabbage. Still no mind. Oh, Maggie's quite right. He's entitled to take a break for a meal and other things, and he's got to patrol the diggings in the next street. They can't touch him there. It's no use her swearing the lamp wasn't there, because it was. And from what you tell me, it looks as though she's going to report him also for impudence. Now, that could cost him his job. Insubordination. He's on his ticking off for himself. Uh, I think the best thing we can do is to find out what really happened. We're only going to tell her. Well, you picked the wrong moment. There's a time and a place. But you were already phoning, Ray. Bernard, you are what they call naive. If she was phoning through a complaint, she'd have to make another couple of dozen phone calls before she got through to the right department. Works on a system of escalation. I think you should keep your trap shut, myself. Me too. It won't come to nothing. Well, I wish you'd have kept your shut. I wish you'd never told me. I were quite happy not knowing. Audrey? Well, Sandra put the lamp back immediately, so nobody knows for sure. It's only Annie Walker's word. So you're going, are you? Yes, I'm going. That's why I've called for the luggage traps. Oh, yes, I should have returned them when I come back from New York. That's all right. I'll do them out and bring them round. By heck, there's no knowing how much of other folks' stuff I'll find when I go through them drawers. <laughs> Thanks. What's the summit else? Mrs. Sharples. Do you think I'm doing the right thing? The first time you asked for my advice, last year you were about six, I'd given you a penny for going an errand and you didn't know whether to buy a Kali sucker or a lucky bag. You bought the lucky bag in spite of the fact I told you it was a lot of rubbish. And that's what you think I'm doing? Going off a bill is a load of rubbish? No, unless I'm saying out of sort. You'll go your own road regardless. But I'm asking you. People that ask for advice don't really want it. It's because they're not sure, and it's always very nice to be able to blame the person that's supposed to have given the advice if things go wrong. You think I'm not sure, do you? I'm sure you're not sure. 
But he's not been near us, and Alan. He's not been near me at all. Why? Would it have made any difference? Oh, I don't know. Probably not, but he could have called if just to say goodbye. He could have called. I mean, we're supposed to be friends. <laughs> mature people. The only time you mature is when you're six foot under. Because by then you know all the answers. Ah, uh, oh, just passing. Thought I'd uh, drop oh, these few things in. Thank you, love. Right, well, I'll... Uh... Oh, it's all right, love. I'm just off. Anyway, thanks for your advice. I'll remember what you said. Advice? Said? About the lucky bags. You know, if you ask me, her old life's been one big lucky bag, or unlucky bag. So I've heard. So she's, um, she's going. That's what she says. Well, I think she's making the right move. Do you? Yeah, I do. New life, with Bill Gregory, in a new country. Yes, that's another thing. What's she opening up in Portugal for? What's wrong with London? No. Well, I still think she's doing the right thing. And when I get a chance, I'll tell her. You do now at Salt Lass. Never interfere. Oh, Mrs Sharples. Not in matters like this. Ah, maybe you're right. Thank you. Will you do something for me? Anything. On your way back to the shop, will you call in the hairdressers and ask Alan Howard to come and see me? Interfering, Mrs Sharples. I've a favour to ask of him, that's all. I'll tell him. Oh, and Maggie. Yeah? Don't tell me you think Elsie Tanner ought to leave for her own good. No. No. Because that would suit you, wouldn't it? With her gone, it leaves the field clear. For you. Do you know, Mrs Sharples? I think you've hit the nail on the head. You haven't packed the stove, have you? No, of course not. Well, it seems like it. It's just that me and Bernard would like to be able to do some toast now and again. That's if you don't mind just staying here. Oh, of course I don't, you knit. Mind you, I don't know where me and Ray will go when we get married. But Bernard will be there and he'll be able to... Well, I'd better leave you and get off to work. Oh, thank you very much. That's very kind of you. How do you expect me to fasten this with it? Are any use to? Thank you very much. Mrs. Sharples asked me to bring them round. She gave me a penny for going the message. She said something about a Kali sucker. That's Mrs. Sharples for you. The soul of generosity. Elsie. Please don't go. <coughs> Coronation Street P two two eight stroke nine five seven part two take one. According to Mrs. Walker, there was no red lamp when she fell down the hole. There certainly was not. And yet Bernard said he saw it only a few minutes later. I am not telling lies, Mr. Turpin. Oh, Mrs. Walker, I'm not suggesting you are. Neither am I suggesting it's Bernard. Here comes the Sherlock Holmes bit. Now, oh, shut up, Stan. Now, what's happened is that somebody's missed out a little bit of truth in between. Eh? I think I'll ask a few questions. Find out, Mark. You know, I'm glad I lead a pure, blameless life with him around. As Civil said, shut up, Stan. Eh? Well, honey. Well, of course, I had no intention of getting the poor old man the sack. I merely wished him to be reprimanded. But, of course, if Mr Turpin is going to solve the problem... And what's more, she snores. How do you know? <laughs> I've heard her through the wall. Yeah, you're trying to put me off, aren't you, eh? I wish I could. You mean that, don't you? Yes, Bill, I do. Then why haven't you done something about Elsie? Call me Doug in the manger, if you like. Maybe I'm not the right man for her. Is Alan Howard? Could be. He could be better than me. What about me? Don't you think I love her and could look after her? Maybe you love her, Bill, but can you look after her? Elsie's a... a sparrow in a dirty street. She couldn't survive in a, an aviary with birds of paradise. She tried it once. And they nearly pecked her to death. Leave... Leave the pub now. 
It's not two yet. It's nearly. Well, how many times has Annie Walker made a fool of herself? It's not so long since she was accusing Betty Turpin <laughs> and Miss Nugent of stealing the Grand Jewels or summer. Suppose, just suppose, that we got in touch with the authorities and told them it was us. Then Ben yeah. wouldn't lose his job and, well, Annie would never know it was us. They'd just say somebody confessed and all yeah. our faces would be saved. Yeah. Hey, Bernard, stick that cannabis in the teapot. <laughs> Dicky, the hash, swallow it. Have you got a search warrant, Sergeant? No, just a squad surrounding the house with tear gas waiting for my signal. <laughs> no joke. I just thought I'd pop in and uh, have a few words about the diggings. What they found now? A Roman skull? Well, they could have found Mrs. Walker's <coughs> skull. Even now they might find old Ben's insurance cards. No, you know what I think? I think that uh, lamp has taken away as a joke by one of you lot. And I think you put it back again. Now, let me see. Who's the weakest link in this chain? Excuse me, Mr. Turpin, but I think I am. And so do I, Bernard. What an excellent judge of character you are. I'm selfish, Elsie, and that's the only excuse I can offer. And I want you to stay. I don't know, Alan. I really wish I did. You still have a couple of minutes. I was very fond of Bill, you know. Perhaps I'll find how fond when it's too late. It was his wife, you know. Did you know her? I came very near to her, but I didn't look. Perhaps I should have looked. Perhaps it would have made a difference. But this afternoon, when he was here, <laughs> seven years ago. I had a wife. Yeah. But that was before you met me. Does that make a difference? Strangely enough, it does. Will you stay? Do you mean it? Do you really want me to? Do you mean it? I mean it. Oh, uh, there's uh, a taxi outside for you. That's it, then. I'm sorry. For me, but not for yourself. That it? Hey, ever see that squint eyed bent, you know, that one in jib? Shoot. I see. Bye, you. Hey, come more often. I, um, I wonder if you'd have been a bother as that if uh, it had been me going away. Why? Well, the only time you seem concerned about Elsie is when somebody's trying to take her away. Do you feel the same about me, if I was leaving? Try me. I might. Someday. You never know. Better go and tell him. You don't have to, he'll know. Can't leave him just standing there. You won't want dramatics, Elsie. Not going to get dramatics. as human to forgive divine as I always say. I think somebody <laughs> else said that uh, Mrs. Walker but uh, never mind. <laughs> well never let it be said that I haven't a sense of humour. Oh she has me in stitches at times. Oh don't tell me Jack six stitches in the back of your head six in the front. Oh <laughs> somewhat like. Now look I reckon you're all taking it too lightly. Now I'll admit young Langton took the lamp but Ben ought to have been on the alert for an attack. I mean it might have been a wheelbarrow or a concrete mixer. And I'll tell him so when I see him tonight, even if we are pals. Well, I must be getting off to talk. Well, I think it's about time I went as well. Tell yeah. then. Jen, love? Yes, please, then. He's gone. What? I said he's gone. Yes, I know. I know. I know. I know. 
That's tough, Benny. Uh, come on, let's let set him up. Drink so long, I'm so looking forward to you than you. Oh, you. Come, you two are looking pleased with yourselves. Why should we? We just got engaged. Hey, congratulations on the fair of you. You know, Summit. What? I, I never even saw her. There you are, Elsie. <clears throat> Thanks, Jack. I've got one. Huh? Oh, sorry. We've a love that's true. Hey, that's smashing. Glad somebody likes them. It's better than these modern tunes, you know, flamish them moon and a blue tomato or something. Oh, well, some's mine, some's my dad's, some's my granddad's. They've been having dust in that box for years. This belongs to the world, you know. I might be able to find an outlet. Only one outlet for that, through the vocal cords. Commercial, Mrs. Sharples. Lennon McCartney stuff, you know, tart. You're welcome. <coughs> Gonna miss me? Of course I am. <laughs> hey, what about me missing you? Ah, well, you've got a photograph of me to put on your pillar. They'll only be left with beautiful, fleeting memories. Aye, and a dirty big pile of empties underneath the kitchen sink. Hey, you sit on that empties, Dickie. That's my estate. There's threepence on each. Well, it's only a bus ride to books, and I could cycle there in two hours. Give or take a day. A bus ride, yes, but worlds apart. Ah, there I'll be, bathing in baths of pure vodka, having me back scrubbed by Derbyshire hula hula girls. Don't be daffy, there's no hula hula girls in books, and, and besides, it's pure mineral waters. Give over, that's what they put round to keep the drunks away. <laughs> it's pure vodka bubbling out from Mother Earth. Oh, not today, thanks. Dad. Hey, listen, I'm selling now. Can you tell me the phone number of that singer mate of yours? What's his name? Uh, Mickey Malone. Right. <coughs> you know, you might be in there, mate. You said somewhat about a puppy tact. Eh? Regrets? None. You sure? I'm sure. You know, Bill was right. Forget about Bill. I'll go and make some tea. You said you just go storming in and you don't take no for an answer. Is that what he said? You're going out with me tomorrow. Am I? Hmm? Got a surprise for you. What? Tomorrow. Hey, uh, Jack, huh? can I use your phone? Oh, help yourself. Yeah. It's uh, <coughs> private, like. There's only one thing that'll get me to the other side of the bar, that's you ordering a pint, and I'll pull it slowly. Give us a pint. Right. Yes. Can I have a word with you, Mr Tapton? Yes, and I want a word with you. I want a better go over it. Right, then. Well, you know what that is? Who does that do? Well, what is it? Well, I know what it is. Well, look, I was offered ten bob the other day for that, that fellow that wanted some silver. Now, you tell me what it is, Albert. Well, it, it's a DCM. That's right. And it's got my name round edge. Oh. And do you know how I got it? No. They're all out like that outside. There were some jerrys in that hole with a Lewis gun, and I had to take that all off them. So next time, Albert, that you feel like telling somebody that they should be put up against a stone wall and shot, just you ask them if they've got any old silver to dispose of first, eh? Ben, hey? would you care for a drink? Oh, I, I would. Good, yes. because... But not in this book, thank you very much. Mr Tatlock, you were absolutely all right about that horrible old man, and to think that I'd forgiven him. Do you know what? I think it's diabolical the way you've treated him, and you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Yeah, look, Albert, are you coming? Where? For a pint in another pub, or have you lost it? Right, I'm with you. Yeah, that, that, that's right, Mr. Malone. I, yeah, yeah. Yeah, words of music by uh, me. Yeah. Yeah, all right, then I'll, I'll come round and see you. Tell her. There you are, one point. Do you know something, Jack? What? <laughs> Get yourself a drink. I'm going to be famous. <laughs>